Shalom, this is Nathaniel from the Holland Camp. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Wahawah Kakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, that teach and rule well, among many other things, and peace and salutations to the elect that are scattered abroad in the four winds of the earth, out there in the highways and hedges, and pushing his truth and sincerity. Shalom. Now, <clears throat> you know, I was uh, thinking about concerning uh, Joel, you know, um, let the weak say that I'm strong concerning this global uh, arms race. And if you go to Google and you type in global arms race, May 2022, you will get some old stuff and, you know, some here and there. Right. So I had to go to the Yandex, man, because these devils are actually hiding a lot of information that's going on in this world that needs to be brought out and shown to the world what's really going on, man. Because as a lot of people are going on about their day, more concerned about the cares of this world, they're not realizing that World War Three is uh is on its way, man. All right. So as you can see here, you, you got a list. Um, right here is a hypersonic missile fuel new global arms race. Um, uh, 2022. The new global AI arms race. How nations must compete on artificial intelligence. The China-U.S. Arms Trade Arms Race Diplomat, May 2022. A new global arms race. Military situation in Ukraine on May 23, 2022. Map update. Global arms race escalates with China becoming the second biggest export. Our attack drones, the next global arms race. That's in 2021. Uh, let's see. Special reports as of May 23rd, 2022. It's going into May, 11th May. The uh, global currency reset was activated according to Q and Trump. The kingpin of GCR. Global arms race to create a super intelligent AI is looming. All right. Now you got more arms race. Uh, I think that's old. Restore Republican VIS May 23rd. Upgrade blah, 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 blah. blah. Global currency reset reminder, you know, and it's not going to get any better. The tensions are going to rise and rise until eventually war is going to break out. Okay. Now we can go into, let's see, I'm going to go to, I want to go into this one right here. This article right here, the diplomat. The China-U.S. arms trade arms race. For all its military technology advances, China remains far behind the U.S. in arms exports. The example of Nigeria helps explain why. China has chipped away at the United States' qualitativity, qualitative, <laughs> that's a weird word, Military edge in many respects over the last few decades, building up competitive or asymmetric capabilities as substantial clip, but for all its progress in modernizing its own military, it has not yet reached uh, parity with the U.S. or Russia or Europe in terms of selling its domestically 
produced arms to foreign customers. Arms sales are not a straightforward standing for geopolitical influence, of course, but they are not a simple commercial exchange either. There are legal, ethical, and strategic considerations to the sale of weapons, which do not apply to other forms of trade. And most modern weapons required ongoing support with ties, providers, and clients, states together and can be used as leverage to de deepen other aspects of a political or strategical alliance. Take as an example Nigeria, the largest by population and richest country in Africa. Nigeria is a useful case for understanding the dynamics of the global arms trade in part because it is not formally aligned with either the United States or China, but both countries maintain close ties there, and both have made sales of high-end equipment there in recent years. Despite its wealth, Nigeria faces numerous overlapping security problems, including Islamic insurgencies, uh, banditti, is a weird name, Bandur, Band, Banditry, Banditry, piracy, mass kidnapping, and an unrailing social and political contract between the federal government and its subsidiary, subsidiary regions, given the demand, demands on the military, the attrition it has faced it is un unsurprising that you, uh, Nigeria has been in the market for a variety of new arms even if fundamental solution to those problems will require much more than that even leaving aside the admittedly profound questions of training, morale, and tactics, the military's Cold War era legacy system have uh, significant limitations, one particularly important shortcoming. For a country primarily fighting irregular opponents amongst its own population is a lack of uh, precision which makes civilian casualties a more frequent occurrence that in turn makes the fundamental job of country uh, counter surgencies preventing the civilian population from siding with the insurgents for, uh, far more difficult than it already is. Right? So this right here is explaining you know, a situation that, you know, for uh, like, you know, China, they're not selling as much weapons as Russia and, and America is to other countries. Why? Because what they're doing right now is they're forming alliances. And China also wants to do that as well. Why? For t uh, strategical purposes. Okay. So this is clearly an arms race and to make money, okay? And it shows you that, as it reads here, let me grab it really quick. Uh, where are you? Let's start in Joel 3 and 9. It shows you right here in Joel chapter 3 verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. And that is what is occurring right now. Because all the mighty men, which is talking about these uh, um, countries, you know, of their military forces, are getting, uh, are getting ready for war, man. That's what they're doing. They're forming alliances. They're selling uh, uh, certain weapons to certain countries, okay? 
for strategical uh, 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 advantages. Okay? Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. And that is what is happening right now. Okay? All these different countries are gearing up for war. As it reads here in verse 10, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Now, what is that talking about? This is talking about instead of putting their money into agriculture, they're putting their money into weapons. Okay? And you can clearly see that when uh, China, for example, wants to catch up to, the, uh, to selling arms and weapons to different countries in order to gain an advantage. And that is, what, that is exactly what America is doing. That is exactly what um, Russia is doing. Okay? Helping these other smaller countries. For example, America sending a lot of money over there to Ukraine for what? To gain advantage. Okay? Sending money to, to all these other smaller countries as well. You know? To pretty much form an alliance in order to win a war, okay? And that's why a lot of people don't realize that the economy is not doing good because they're putting their money into what? The military. They're putting their money into weapons. They're not putting their money into the economy. Otherwise, the economy will be booming. You know, all these problems with debt wouldn't be as bad as it is right now. But that, that's what they're doing right now. And it says here, let the weak say, I am strong. Because these other smaller countries now have nuclear capabilities. Pakistan got nuclear weapons. India got nuclear weapons. North Korea got nuclear weapons. And they're not taking shit from America either. Okay? That's what it's talking about. Let the weak say, I am strong. Because they're getting their weapons from <laughs> these different countries all right. What the hell does India got to do with a submarine that has nuclear capability? <laughs> you know? But that's what's going on right now, man. We're actually in a time of war. Okay? And it's not going to get better. It's actually going to get a lot worse. Okay? Because as people don't re uh, don't realize that the value of the money is, has decreased okay dramatically people saying that things are becoming more expensive not realizing that the 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 value of money is decreasing okay um assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about thither thither cause thy mighty ones to come down o lord let the heathen be awakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Now, the, the, the valley of Jehoshaphat in the Hebrew, Jehoshaphat is Yahweh Shapat, meaning the Most High's judgment. Why? Because the Most High is gearing up all these other countries for World War III. Okay? And when they <laughs> start to fight each other, the Most High is going to have them destroy one another. Okay? You're going to see a lot of people perishing in this up and coming Third World War. All right. For there will, I, uh, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. You see. And that's what's going to happen here very soon. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, the fats overflow, and their wickedness is great. Multiply. Uh, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall uh, withdraw their shining. Why? Because um, when uh, pretty much one of the main prophecies, the MOTB, the Haragma, as it talks about in Revelation chapter 13, Okay, when that is going to be made mandatory, okay, this third world war is going to go nuclear. 
all right and when the nuclear bombs are dropping okay the the sun there's not going to be no more sun moon none of that okay the lord also shall roar out of zion and utter his voice from jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake okay because destruction is going to be so bad that the earth is going to rock to and fro but the lord will be it's like you but the word uh, but the lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of israel right because you're going to have a remnant of our people being delivered off of, uh, off of the earth man and with them chariots okay what they call ufos so shall you know that I am the Lord, your power, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no stranger pass through her any more. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountains shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim you know and you know the thing is is that Israel is going to be <laughs> it's going to be back on point man due to the Lord man all right verse 19 Egypt shall be a, des a desolation and Edom shall be desolate wilderness you see so after this third world war Okay, Edom, the, the so-called white people, it shows you right here that they're the modern-day Egyptians, man. Okay. Egypt shall be a desolation. Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed the innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem for generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed for the Lord dwelleth in Zion all right so yeah this is a quick report you know concerning the news you know um, yeah you know we just uh, hope that you know things speed up quicker because hey man things are getting a lot worse around here in this world you know and um uh, this, this it needs to go, man. You know that's why, as it talks about in Matthew twenty four, uh, verse uh, was it verse six. For all this thing, uh, for all these things, for all this must. Ha um, let me just grab it. No oh, boy, this is Matthew twenty four, and six, and six, and it reads, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, right? So we are not to be troubled of all these things that are occurring right now, because all these things need to come and pass, come to pass, which are these prophecies, okay? In order for what the end to come. All right. So with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakudash, double honors to the apostles, the elders, a great millstone that teach and grew well, among many other things. And peace of salutations to the elect that are scattered abroad in the four winds. Shalom.